Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday, episode 74. Thank you for joining the live stream tonight, some regulars. And if you're new to the program, please call yourself out as putting new NEW in the chat. We want to call you out specifically. Thanks for joining this growing in popularity weekly RV YouTube live show to help us all be better RVers. And if you're watching the, the replay, uh, special thanks to you for taking time out of your day to watch this on your schedule, which is kind of cool. Boy, do we have a good show for you tonight, I think. You be the judge, of course. we got some um, friends in the house already. And let me kind of walk through what the show is going to be for you tonight. We'll get some shout-outs to our regulars here in just a minute. So let me zoom in here for you. Um, so tonight, the topic comes from an audience friend, and uh, they wanted to know, how do I prevent bike theft at night? Well, that's a pretty good question because that's what my bike looks like on the back of my van all the time unless I'm riding it. And we have a special van tip for you uh, on puck lights. And you got to say that kind of carefully. This is what we're talking about, puck lights. And Libation Live, we're actually coming at you live from the uh, parking lot of Steam Hollow Brewery. And this is kind of what their logo ish looks like. Very, very cool people. And movie of the week. I'm going to surprise you toward the end on movie of the week tonight. But we also want to do your questions. This is all about your questions. Uh, and we answer them as best I can. And if I don't, because I don't have any experience, we don't try and beat around the bush here. We'll just say I don't have experience on that. Here's some topics in case you are wondering, uh, needing a little jog, jogging of the brain. Anything camper van, Class B RV, Travato, Volta, Lithium in particular, Embassy RV, uh, anything like that is certainly fair game um, on the program every Wednesday. What's up Wednesday? And then tonight, also, we have something kind of special. Let me tee this up. Um, so we, we're going to make some changes to the program. So about every, like I said, we've been going over 74 weeks. That's well over a year. And we about every six months, we change up the program just a little bit. And I want to share that with you tonight. So if you're in here for the topic, stay tuned because uh, you don't want to miss the topic for sure and how I solve the problem of not getting my bike stolen when I'm in the van in particular. Okay, let me walk you through this. So what's changing to What's Up Wednesday? I am now including video time points after the show is posted. Might take me a day or two. What am I talking about video time points? Let me zoom in here for you. So the first one we did is the show we had with um, the Russos, we're the Russos, Joe and Kate, on the show last week. And if you look at the white image there, you can see video time points. And what you can do is fast forward two of those time points in the video by scrubbing the little player head forward so you don't have to watch the entire hour to find out the one or two things you're really interested in. I've had many requests for this over the over the years. I used to do it. It's a lot of work. And um, we're now doing this on a go-forward basis. And I think it will help the program. Most folks don't sit around for an hour watching and listen to me and, and get questions answered. That's okay. Because we want to help you be a better RVer. Whether you're no time, still taking, uh, you know, shopping, Part-time taking cool trips, uh, full-time, third year for me in my van. Uh, pretty amazing stuff. The next thing we want to talk about is this, which is the van tip we're going to repost as a video. What am I talking about here? Well, some of you have seen this already. So we do a van tip every week. And the last one we did, uh, this was actually a few, a couple of months ago. We posted that just this week on how to keep your black tank happy. I get really good feedback from folks on these specific tips, really to help you be a better RVer, whether you're again, on the road now or down the road. Um, and again, looking at live stream, people just, they just, you know, one hour, they're not going to do it. They're not going to search the, the, the uh, time points for it. But if there's a 15 minute video, now they might be interested. So we want to get as much information out to folks as possible. That's the goal of this channel. We learn together, we share together, you decide what's the best way for you to roll. Next item. And that is viewer recommendations. Now, I used to be pretty good at this. And I'll be honest, I haven't been lately. And what am I talking about here? On my webpage, go small, live large. There's a form you can fill out. Because a lot of these recommendations I talk about actually come from you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know everything. I live in a van. So um, what we want to do is, is capture your uh, recommendations on places, even on Libation Live, you know, drinks, um, places to see, go, tips that you've learned from your own van experience. Super important that we learn together, we share together, and then you decide what's best way for you to roll. Now, this next one, I got to tell you, I'm a little squeamish on, and I've been debating this for a long time, and I don't want to make you the product of 
this channel, Go Small, Live Large. But the time has come, and I'll explain why, for me to put out my tip jar. And if you find value in the content I provide, we're going to start doing the supers, as YouTube calls it. What is that? Well, that is super chats, super stickers, and super thanks. Now, a lot of the YouTube RVers, uh, YouTubers do this. Um, my favorite one is uh, Traveling Robert. When he gets a super chat, this is where you actually send some money in and you elevate your question. And um, if you look in the notes, there, they should be activated for you tonight. Tonight's our first night we're turning this on. And what Traveling Robert does is when he gets a super chat, he does this little singing thing, super chat. I clearly can't sing. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to shake my tip jar for thanking you for sending me a tip. Let me show you what this looks like. And more importantly, why am I doing this? Let's start there. <laughs> so why am I doing this? Um, again, I really debated for the last six months on this. Um, I think if you value the content I provide, I would like for you to show that you value my content. And putting some skin in the game, even literally a dollar, means a lot to me. The next thing, it helps offset the cost of doing what I do being a full-time traveler, full-time content producer. A couple of examples. These two screens I'm looking at right now was a $600 hardware investment to make this show go better. I just signed up for a how to be a better YouTube video content creator. Super expensive course. It runs from June through July. We'll see if things improve in August, hopefully before then. But the bottom line is this is expensive stuff and I don't have a corporate job anymore. So I get no paydays. I just get what... Um, you get the point. So it helps offset the cost of this. I no longer have cats to feed, which is a little savings, I guess. I don't know. And I think the most important thing is just support the channel to help us make us uh, be better RVers. That's really what it's about. It just helps keep us rolling forward. And I don't ask you for any other money. There's no memberships. We're not selling, selling t-shirts. There's no Patreons. So again, if you find value, do a super chat. Let me show you what that looks like. And then you can... Uh, some of you may be thinking, Scott, we know what's really behind this. Your bar tab is pretty high. And you know what? And sometimes it is, especially for these shows. Uh, like tonight, I bought Libation Live. It was a six-pack. cost me like, um, I don't know, $15? So every Wednesday, I put money in. Now, clearly, I enjoy it. But uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> this helps this, pro this program there, too. So cheers to you on that. Um, so let me show you how this works. So this is a, cl a clip I did from... Um, YouTube, um, teaching me on what this would be. And again, if you've seen other YouTubers on RVs in particular, um, what you're going to see is a kind of an elevated um, and a colorized question or comment. And that's kind of number one is it brings your content forefront to me, and those will be certainly be answered and not missed at all. And I already see one here from Steve Ackerman. Look at that. Thank you, sir, for the tip. So you'll get this, you'll get elevation and you'll get noticed and you'll be supporting the cause, which is kind of a cool point. And going forward, let me zoom in here for you. We've turned on another thing called Super Thanks that in the end of the um, of the video there, you can see where it is on the on the web page for um, on YouTube. There's a thanks and a heart there. You can see that. Um, so now you can actually kind of give a tip on videos. And what's cool about this is the more thanks I get, that kind of indicates a higher degree of serious interest in that topic. Um, now we can look at likes, we can look at views, but it's really hard for me to determine if that's really a, a relevant uh, topic for you. So we're going to keep a track of that as well. And <laughs> and Travel Dreamer, look at that. Ooh, this is so great. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, a great deal. Again, I, I struggle with this long and hard. I don't want to make you the way I make money, but it, the time has come. And if you look at the price of gasoline, uh, everything is just going crazy and... Um, no paychecks on Fridays mean I need other ways to do this. So if you find value, feel free to hit me up for a buck. I would really appreciate that. And don't feel obligated. Seriously. Um, I struggled with this for a long time, but tonight was the night. So uh, look at that. Michael Clark. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay. So let's keep rolling forward. And again, a big thank you for that. And if I get a ton of negative feedback on this, we'll re revisit. But um, um, everybody else is doing Local hounds. Look at that. Wow. You guys are keeping me busy tonight. I'm a cheap, but I wanted to try it. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's so great. Really appreciate that. Okay, big show. Let's keep going. I'm uh, where am I coming at you from? So this is a small town in Illinois uh, called Mantino, and uh, this was a billboard that was um, um, on the side of a building today. As I rolled into town here, 
specifically to find this brew pub. And so that's what's on the, that's where I'm coming at you from. You might, or where in the heck is that at? And, uh, that's little, it's a little North of Kankakee where I've been the last couple of weeks. And, um, uh, that's where it is. And here's the weather. Look how hot it is. Every place, boys and girls. Holy cow. This is the first of June, by the way. What is July going to bring? I am not excited at all. I might be headed to Canada post haze. I don't know. Um, and uh, let's talk about gasoline prices. Mark, thank you. I see one second. Um, so fuel has gone up about 20 cents in this area in the last five days since our last one. And uh, if you can buy a house pretty cheap here in Mantino. And uh, you can see the, the list there from Redfin. So uh, take a good look at those. And it's kind of curious how that compares to your area because it's getting kind of crazy out there. And I just paid $4.99 a gallon today. And even I'm going like, wow. 10 gallons of gas costs 50 bucks, <laughs> but I'm not changing my stuff. We're still rolling forward. So, um, and uh, look at this tin can, Carl. Thank you, sir. And Jane. Oh my God. Mark Williams. Thank you, everybody. Um, hopefully that's not too loud. i go over there. It's not totally my thing. Um, and, um, thank you everybody. I know it's, um, many of you have asked me, how, how can we help? And uh, this has just been burning my brain for a, a long time and, and, uh, every little bit helps. So thank you so much. Don't feel obligated every week, every video, every, you know, just when your heart tells you to do it. Um, Okay, what else we got going for you? We got a ton going on tonight. Yeah, where are you watching from? Uh, I'm, I'm all juiced up tonight. I'm so excited. Um, did leg day at the gym today. Let me tell you, if that doesn't get your blood pumping, oh my gosh, not much will. So where are you watching from? I'm always curious about that. If we have a new uh, place, new country, we like to call that out specifically. All right, let's talk. say hi to some of the regulars here. So if you are new to the channel, please type in, um, just say, hey, new at first time, whatever, something like that, and that would be great. Um, let me say hi to some folks here. Mark Goins in the house. I appreciate that, sir. Uh, Mark Williams in the house, Frisco, Texas. I can't wait to get to Frisco, Texas. Um, apparently Mark's already on the, uh, GT and grapefruit, uh, gin and tonic with grapefruit. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Uh, Jane's in the house. Um, you guys are so great. Thank you. <laughs> Jane and Roger. Um, yeah, I am. This is actually becoming a pretty good friend. If you're not using gas buddy, um, use it. Um, I wish it was a paid version. So the ads go away. But um, I am really starting to use this now. I never really paid attention to it before. Um, Travel Dreamers in the house and Jeff's in the house. And uh, uh, yeah, five bucks. It's just, it's just skyrocketed this, lot, this last week. I don't understand. There needs to be like a, I don't know, a PBS you know, front line. I think it's collusion. I am convinced it's collusion. I would love to know the wholesale price of gasoline. Um, I, just, I don't know. That could be a whole other story. Um, there's Timothy. There's Dave. Steven. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, endless summer. I love Fort Lauderdale. Dave's in the house. Uh, my bike secret. My bike goes uh, stops. Doesn't look pretty. Someone's to steal. I tried the ugly bike. It didn't work. Um, lots of folks. David's in the house. Here's Sharon from Ohio. Uh, Salty medic. Always good to see you, sir. And uh, Larry, see me Valley. Let's see the gas price. No way. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm not coming to California. 6.30 a gallon. That would give me cause to pause. So crazy. Steve's in the house. Donna. Good to see you. Tulsa. Love Tulsa. Uh, here's a Mesa Mike. Um, back from a long weekend. You have to see how you do it there. Um, Sharon Fields. Okay. Question of the night. So this is what we want to talk about. We got a few more things to cover before we get to the topic. I'm always running behind. So uh, Sharon wants to know, do you have any special soap shampoos when sharing in your van? I use Method Men. Um, the cypress flavor scent. Uh, why? Because it rinses really clean out of the van. I used um, Dove Men. Um, it's not even Men. It's just Dove uh, shower gel. I always use shower gel. and um, But it sticks to the walls. I'm flinging it all around. And um, it takes more water to rinse the walls uh, when I'm done showering. So I just use Method Men. Nothing overly fancy. That's for sure. Um, a great question. All right, let's take a look at a couple more things. So bring this on. We've got some cool videos coming up. Uh, so on YouTube, on Friday, we've got number two video out of eight on van life routines. And this video, boys and girls, goes way beyond breakfast. Talked about some of my new health practices and other things. You don't want to miss that. And then on Sunday, we're kind of devoting those to van tours. We're doing the Solus Pocket. Cute little camper van. This is with Winnebago Motorhomes out in Rockford, Illinois. And um, so you don't want to miss that. Hey, if you're having a great day, give us a thumb up. Sure, appreciate that. If you're having a bad day, give a thumb up. That just makes you feel better. And again, if you're kind of new to the program, we got a lot of really cool guests coming in two weeks. We're going to actually put the ladder, we'll put the ladder on first. And then we're actually going to do the live installation of the tire mount here. I've been in touch with Peter, rubber vans out of Chicago. 
and we're going to do this. I am so excited to, to do this. I've been measuring to make sure my bike clears it. Uh, probably have to go buy a new tire and a wheel. Um, hence the helps. <laughs> um, so huge, huge, uh, huge show that night. June 27, we got Trevor Johnson, uh, KOA selling deeded lots. Uh, he's the chief strategy officer. He's going to join us uh, that video. Andrew Cooley, co-founder of Storyteller, is going to join us in July. CEO of Harvest Host, Joel, is going to join us in August. And Wingham, we're still working for a date. I'm thinking September. Um, and if you like camper van products, tours, and tips, you want to subscribe to the channel. And, of course, it's about your questions. These are some of the topics. So let me get a couple more questions in, and then we'll talk about the whoops, uh, the topic of the night because that may, that may be why some folks came in here. So... Um, Oh, wow. Steve, look, it's a messed up. First time ever uh, doing one. You did a great job, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's really, really great. Um, here's, uh, oh, Sally, welcome. Really appreciate you joining us. Sally Shuck, uh, tell us what kind of van you have. And by the way, this is not about Sage on the Stage, me. You got you all chat amongst yourselves, and the regulars do this regularly, and I think it's so cool. So I'm not offended when you're not even paying attention to me. Um, that is not really what this is all about. It's just building community, van life fellowship, camper van owners, whether you're a wannabe or a current, and we just become better RVers. I've learned a lot of things from you, uh, each one of you. So this is what it's all about. Uh, here's Don in, in Scottsdale. Pretty hot there, I'm guessing, right? Uh, Robin's in the house, Tang Fish. Uh, so Ron's uh, says he normally sees uh, the, the the replay. So thanks for joining us live tonight. I appreciate that. Um, and Diane says winter's finally leaving Idaho. If, if it's staying, I'm headed to Idaho next. I am. Look at this, Van Liberty. Woo! Thank you, sir. Um, this is, he says, uh, and by the way, that helps bring your question. Let me make sure you, many of you have uh, given me a tip but didn't ask a question. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing a question. That's kind of the whole point. Uh, travel dreamer. Let's that be right back to you. Um, so, a travel dreamer forty six. Um, again, thank you for that. Will you be bringing a cat to the van? No, we're done with cats. Uh, my next pet is sea um, um, sea monkeys. And if you're not familiar with what a sea monkey is, um, I'm going to put them in an airtight container. We're going to stick them on the on the dash like a felt full of algae. But I'm done with cats. Um, probably pets for in general. I just they they. Um, uh, so yeah, no more cats. Not fun on uh, losing them either way. Uh, okay, so Tin Can Carl says, uh, you're my inspiration, Scott, I value more than you know. I appreciate that, sir. Um, and I loved your comment. I think it was last week of the Russos that I am to you that the Russos are to me. So um, that's what we do here. And I am just honored to be part of that. Um, uh, Mason Mike wants, are you done with your sticks and bricks issue in Illinois? It's supposed to close tomorrow. It's going to close next Friday. I'm still praying. I think it's going to be okay. Thank you for asking. Um, but I am definitely um, headed up to, um, I think, Wisconsin around the loop, coming down through Michigan. I think that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll reevaluate uh, where it's next. Um, so let's see. John Williams says, thank you for that. Uh, not a full-timer, so a lot of content here doesn't apply. But you're a very likable person, so here goes. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. You know, we might get under your skin, sir. And, be, and you may want to get an RV and start traveling because it changes your it changes your brain for sure. Now back to Van Liberty. Uh, do you like red ale? Bought you some Smittix, uh to try for the camp. I love Smittix. Oh, my God. It's so delicious. Um, I know it's called Smithwicks. That's kind of you say it, but I've always heard it pronounced Smittix. Irish uh, beer. Um, very, very cool. So let's see, got a couple more questions. Hang in there if you came in for the topic. Man, I am so late tonight. Um, she's got a good question here. Oh, wow, this is a new name I haven't noticed. Uh, Hendersonville, love the program. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, not sure how you say that, but thank you for, for doing that. Um, let's see. Uh, Steve wants to know, will I be attending Winnebago's National uh, Rally in Forest City, Ohio, Iowa in July? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, didn't, was it the first year? Um, found it to be a lot of fun. Um, I just have other plans. And that was kind of my deal last year. I, route, I drove Route 66 instead. Um, it's not super far away from Chicago, but it's in the middle of July. And there's just other places I want to be in July instead of Ohio. No offense to anybody from Ohio. Um, so Donna, bad news. A tuxedo escaped. Uh, it's, we're not doing a video about it. It's not a very happy story. 
Um, he was on his leash outside, kind of um, tethered to the van. Door sliding door was open. Um, it was dusk. His hunting hour. Um, I was super tired. Fell asleep on this. I can have like a twin bed in the front here, and he managed to wiggle out. He'd done it many times. I caught him all those times, but because I'd fallen asleep, he was gone. And looking for him that evening, that next morning, stayed the next day, just gone. He was not meant to be a van cat. So maybe he's in a happier place. He was not happy. In fact, his, his mood just continued to go downhill on this whole thing. So, uh, yeah, Tuxedo ran away. Um, you know, it's just, you know, it, we got super lucky with Luke. I wish I could bring Luke back in a minute. Um, so great. Larry Key, look at this. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. <laughs> so great. Okay. Let's, um, let's talk about some of the, thank you, Larry. I appreciate that, sir. Larry's a cool cat, by the way, out of Simi Valley, which is where the Ronald Reagan Air uh, Presidential Museum is and the Air Force One. Okay, let's talk about the content tonight, the topic. I'm very late on this by quite a bit. So let's talk about the, the question, which is, let me zoom in here so you can see this. This is the um, TARS View 9. Uh, he or she wanted to know, um, talking about your bike in the back, on the rack in the back of the van. If someone messes with it in the middle of the night, what is your action plan? That is a beautiful question. And it's a very different answer than when I did this video. So I'm on my fourth bike. The first two bikes got stolen when I was not in the van. Uh, the first time I was in Phoenix, I was in a hotel, uh, Marriott uh, with Kyle. He doesn't like the van too much. So we are often, bike was in the on the van, not in the room where it should have been with us. Uh, second time it was on the van in a Ram dealer in Spokane, Washington. And I was not in the van clearly. Their um, yard was not fenced. Somebody come and stole it off the back of the van at the Ram dealer. The third bike uh, was stolen from my campsite at a KOA along a public trail. And I was it was not locked to the picnic table. So those three times were really my fault. If you haven't seen that video, uh, you'll want to see that video because I give you some really good tips on what to do about it, prevent it, insurance claims. But what she wants to know is what do I do to keep it from being stolen while I'm in the van? So that's what I want to share you now. Um, so what the arrows are, here, I'll zoom in for you. What I'm showing you and what, what one of the points in the video was, um, I now have the bike rack locked to the van. That was not the case. Uh, Winnebago ships you a very expensive bike rack, but it's thumb screwed to the van. And anybody with some uh, means and a few friends could lift the entire rack off the van in literally probably four minutes or less. And um, what I recommended is buying these locks. I have it locked in two points. That's the left arrow and the bottom right arrow. And then above super heavy duty chain link, you would have to get one of those grinder, you know, saw things out to get through that chain link. And I'm telling you that would make some noise and call attention if I was in the van day or night. But what I do specifically at night is this. This is my window covering with the bed up. And you can see that the um, the, the, the other cargo door where the, the bed doesn't hit, I always have it open, meaning I don't cover it, unless I'm in a really annoying, too well lit area. And if it is, I actually put a pillow there so I can get to see what's going on at any moment's notice. Now, if there is motion, if there is noise, if I feel something on the van, and you know, literally some force on the van, and I'm a very light sleeper anyway, what I do is this. I peel back the cover and I take a peek at what the hell is going on. And this has happened a couple times. The worst one was in New Orleans, parked, we street camp just outside of um, the, um, what do you call it, the, the district there. Oh my gosh. French Quarter. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so here's my remedy. Number one, be aware. Uh, number two, uh, peek outside if there's issues. And my action plan, if there is a problem, is this. And that is to use a flashlight. What people are not expecting is for somebody to be in the van and you're basically at the headboard where the bike is wrapped. So what I do is I have a flashlight. If I'm in a kind of a sketchiest area, it's right there at my bed. If it's not sketchy, it's at the foot of my bed, my my fruit basket. And what I do is I would peel that back just a little bit and I would flash them with a flashlight and knock on the window. And the two times that that has happened, they have scattered like rats in the daylight as they should, because they were not expecting somebody to be in the van and they thought it was just free, easy pickings. And it isn't. And what I have next to me, of course, is my phone. So if it's getting really sketchy and there's a bunch of them and that first treatment doesn't work, I call the police. 
and I kind of know where I am, you know, where I'm parking, right? Uh, maybe take a photo of it. Again, if it's a sketchy place, I wouldn't really park in one anyway. So I'd call the, the cops if they were not um, responding to my first go around. And then I go dirty hairy on them. If the police are not showing up in a timely manner, I have a hot tip there for you. In a second, you may totally disagree with me. I'm going dirty hairy on them as I get out of the van and I start uh, threatening with some bear spray. Uh, now, that may be illegal, but I'm pretty sure a gun is going to be a way worse situation than getting some pepper spray on a bunch of hoodlums looking for a free bike. Um, by the way, here's a hot tip. In my experience, not necessarily in the van, but at a residential house, if you see something really bad going down and you call the police, they always ask, did you see a gun? I said, it might be a gun. It might be a knife. I don't know. Hurry up. If you say no gun, no knife, it's like, well, bottom of the list, right? So that's what I do. That's my action plan if I have a problem on the uh, on the bike. Now, it's only happened twice in three years. So um, my advice to you is this. Park in a good location. Kind of common sense, right? But it, get a gut feel. If you don't have a good sense of gut feel, move along. Um, Number one. Number two, orient the rig so the street light's on the back of the van so you can see what in the hell is going on in the back of the van. Super important. And by the way, because you cover up the windows, you're going to be mostly protected from the light. But if there's an issue, number one, nobody wants to be in a place where it's well lit and you can see what's going on in a moment's notice. And the last thing, and we'll change subject, is be alert, get some sleep, but be confident. Worst case is put the key in the ignition and drive away. That's why I never turn the seats around when I'm in a street camping situation. I have a clear path. I'm wearing clothes, no birthday suits. I got sandals handy. Worst case, you drive away, right? But um, again, in, in three years, I've had two instances, and that's what I would do on that. So um, hopefully that helps you out. And um, I have not had any problems. I've loved this bike. And let me get that off the screen. And um, yeah, if you, if, you, if, you, if, you found that, <laughs> if you found that helpful, I need a libation live in a second. Um, Thumb up. Really do appreciate that. Okay, let's answer a few questions. And uh, we've got a van tip uh, three minutes ago. So let's do answer some questions and acknowledge some some super chats, uh, which is so great. So here's Steve Hood. Um, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Appreciate that, sir. Um, all your content off the road a couple of weeks. Uh, black tank on E, but not empty. Should I go ahead and empty or leave it? Um, yeah, if you didn't see the Black Tank Happiness video, I would go look at that because it give me five very specific things. What I would do is if you're back at home base, I would fill the tank with water, um, at least to two thirds with fresh water, and then go empty it. Do a Santee flush, assuming you have a Santee flush equipped van, and then you have an empty tank and it's ready to go. Um, once I've emptied it, um, what I do is I put a toilet bowl full of water and one packet of chemical. The toilet bowl full of water is about a gallon. Flush it down and then you're ready for the next go around. And it kind of keeps the... the the tank smell like fresh flowers, which is not too bad. Um, I would, you know, unless you're going to be using it right away again, I would go empty it. I don't want a tank full of, you know, what sitting around. Um, it just ends up sticking to the side. So that would be a, how I would handle that. Um, uh, Mason, Mike, what's up? Are you going to head to uh, Chrome? Yeah, I need to reach out to him. Um, I just don't know about going to County yet. I don't know if I can get in. I haven't tried. I got some other things in my brain. Um, but I would love to have, wouldn't it be fun to have a burger and a beer with that guy and his dog Cruz? Oh my God. Who's entertaining who though? That would be the question. Maybe do a van swap. <sighs> Too much dog slobber for me. So no way. <laughs> Donna, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, appreciate your tip there. And Debbie Johnson, um, thank you for all you do. It's, it's, a, it's just a pleasure. Thank you so much. By the way, I bought this in the Mantino antique store today. Um, this is kind of funny. Uh, let me, so, so I want a, a cool jar, right? Um, I want a bell, but I think a jar would be better. Um, my original jar, are you ready for this? I got an old 198, like this is old, you know, early 20s ball jar. So cool. But guess what it did? I'm just going to show up. I put the coins in to shake and it cracked. You see that? You know, that's what you get for toying with a hundred year old glass. I'm so glad it didn't shatter. So I went back in and got a modern version. It's even got metrics and stuff on the side. But, uh, <laughs> so love this kind of stuff. It's so great. Um, so thank you, Debbie. Appreciate that. I'm not trying to say your job. Or your name, but go. I'm sorry. I'm thinking go Irish. Oh, go Irish. Yeah, of course. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that uh, very much. Okay. Looking for a few more questions. And then uh, whew, I am not going to see Cruz or Chrome. 
I am not paying eight and a half dollars for a gallon of gasoline. <laughs> no way. I will find a nice campsite and wait this thing out. Oh my God, no way. Yeah, shots fired. Um, that too. I, I, I that would be lying because they might inquire inquire other folks around. And they, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw something shiny. Knife or gun? I don't know. A uh, crowbar, you know, anything that would be deadly. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, right. Similar rules. Um, I've been toying with getting a, a you know what, and um, I, I just I just can't pull the trigger on it because um, I, I haven't had any problems. Oh, I don't know. Uh, so Matt's, uh, Matt C, that might be a new name. Welcome, sir. How long is it too long to leave Blackwater in the tank? New Travados from Bend, Oregon. Congratulations. Which Travado do you have? Uh, we would love to know that. Um, so I'm a solo traveler. Mine fills up in about five to six days. I use my toilet for everything all the time, unless it's number one on some place uh, like you know, Walmart or you know, wherever. And I use that. But I literally go number two in my van, and then I go into Planet Fitness to shower. I just prefer that. So it really depends um, on how long you're recycling and you know filling and emptying the tank. If you kind of be- come back from a trip and you're not leaving for another two weeks, that stuff's kind of sitting there fermenting. You'd have a lot of chemical to keep all that uh, to a, a minimum. But I would just, uh, if it's only half full when you get back from to home, fill it up as much as you're comfortable. Um, and what I've found is when it gets to full on the gauge, <laughs> right there, um, I probably have at least another gallon or two to go. Um, you really get to have an ear for it after a while. Uh, but I would not let it sit. I would probably go empty it and then put clean water in with a chemical packet. Maybe some others have had different experience on that. Um, and uh, so that's how we would do that. Um, yeah, empty it. And it's good practice, right? It's not scary. And if you haven't seen my video, um, um, my five tips, cleaning with ice, and what was the other thing we did? Finding a dump station. Um, you want to see that video. It's about 20 minutes long. We just It just posted a few days ago. Really good practical advice. Um, uh, Mark Williams, any updates on Volta Campout? Um, so it's the first week in August. If you are a Volta customer, meaning your rig is equipped with a Volta system and you haven't got the email from them and you want to go, I would reach out to Volta. Just go to the website, Google it. It's voltapowersystems.com, I think, or voltaps.com. Google it. And um, they'll be happy to uh, tell you about what's going on. I'm going to be part of the program in two different points. I got a whole a two and a half days of fun stuff. Um, it's only for Volta customers. So if you have a van, a storyteller, a Tiff and Cahaba, a Winnebago, who else have they got now? Mm, then you're pr- a, Bolt, a Bolt, right? Winnebago. Um, you, you, as far as I know, you're invited. I may be wrong on that. I don't think so. And But, but hit them up and see what the deal is. Look at this. Mesa Mike. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, for a gallon of gas, I'd be two gallons. Um, I have not seen Top Gun Maverick yet um, because it's not playing in this area, which really kind of astounds me because this area has a population of about 60,000 people. So, And there's like, I don't know, four or five movie theaters. And for the, not to be showing here, I'm kind of miffed. So uh, that's on the list. Okay, let's do, um, what are we doing next? Libation Live. Oh my gosh, this program just hour flies. Okay, let me make sure I'm teed up on this side. And I really appreciate you all. Um, so much. You have no idea what the Russo's great last week. I just, um, I just had such a great time with them and we chatted afterwards and they're just the greatest people. Um, and that's what this is about building community. And, um, by the way, Ma- Kyle's mom needs work. So if you want a sticker, um, we have stickers now. We're going all in on stickers. Uh, we have three to choose from. They're three bucks each. And you go to my website, here's all the deals. We're going to self-addressed envelopes, very old school, send cash in the mail. A buck goes to the artist, two bucks goes to Kyle's mom for processing. And uh, it might be time to, um, uh, any more ideas on the, on the brain. So, okay, so let's talk about that. Um, hit me up on Instagram. Uh, if you saw the one I, I posted today, um, the cottonwood trees are seeding, and it was like a snowstorm where I was. And uh, so those are kind of one-offs um, almost daily. So uh, just find me on Instagram. And let's talk about libation life. Okay, this is one of my favorite parts of the week because it's always a discovery. That's what brought me to Mantino today where I got my cool tip jar, right? So this is called um, Steam Hollow Brewing Company. And for those of you that are new, um, I do enjoy a libation, but where I got the idea here was from Traveling Robert. He's always sipping on an IPA in his live streams on Friday nights. And I'm like, 
well, that's kind of interesting. But more important for me was traveling around. There's so many great tastes and sights. And um, what I'm doing is just sharing with you what I'm finding on the road. And this is really good stuff. Um, so it's uh, Steam Hollow Brewing Company. Uh, Mason Mike will appreciate this. Family, uh, veteran family owned. Uh, they're right here in Mantino, right by the um, the freeway. And that's their um, their website. Uh, let me zoom in here so you can see it. They're actually selling beer over the internet. So, um, and they got really good beer. Wait till you see this. Um, let me just pull this out. Yeah. So um, this is what I'm enjoying tonight. This is the High Lift. Hence the Jeep, because the uh, unit next to him in this uh, strip mall lives and repair and uh, kind of does uh, makeovers of old antique Jeeps and 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 um, and Rams, I guess. I don't know. Well, old pickups, we'll say. Um, so there's the all the specs. You guys like to uh, know those. And what I want to do is um, just uh, pop a top. So let's do this if we're doing this together. Ooh, no. Beer. Okay, now beer always tastes better than my Luchenbach Texas glass. Oh man, that's just a lovely. Now I had to assemble this in the in the brewery just to make sure I liked it because I had to buy a six or four pack. Toast, everybody. Tip. <laughs> this is so fun tonight. Mm. I'd help them out. Um, and uh, let's see, that's where they're making the beer. Let me zoom in for you, and so you can see that. Um, Good patriots here. Uh, flags everywhere. That's what the uh, one half of the uh, the facility looks like. I just rolled in a couple out. Well, we had five o'clock, so um, not too many folks there yet. Um, look at this old Ram. This is the Prospector series. Is that the sexiest truck you've seen all day? And I talked to the owner, and he's like, um, or the the guy, the, the shop owner, because I thought it was from the seventies. He goes, Oh no, that's from the early eighties. And I'm like, That is a beauty. You know, if I could do life again, I would probably buy an old vintage pickup and put a modern engine in it. And um, that's just a beauty, right? <laughs> um, okay, let's do some more questions. How are we doing on time? Oh, I got this backwards. I did this last week, too. Um, we we're supposed to do Van Tip. Well, we did Libation Live, uh, following Joe Russo's um, Never Too Early Start Libation Live. Okay, so let's look at some questions here. And I see a few more uh, coming in. Um, Bispo, do you like mango vans in Florida? Yes. And I have a very embarrassing story to tell. So I hit this guy up in um, early last year before uh, I left Florida. Um, we toured his, 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 his shop. It was doing COVID, so everybody was masked up. Um, the sound was absolutely horrible. Um, I still struggle with audio the most of any of my video recordings. Audio just, I can't, I can't nail it. Um, that's why I'm investing in this program to help fix problems like that. Um, so you're never going to see probably the video we did. What I should do is reach out to this guy. He probably didn't give me the finger uh, for taking half of his day, but um, I should actually reach out to him and have him come on the show. They've made really cool vans. Um, so if you're familiar with them, they I think are ProMaster and Sprinter, but he was doing a lot of ProMasters back then. Um, but I liked them a lot. They didn't fit my style of RVing, but they were a really compelling van. Um, so that's, uh, that's all I know of them is what we recorded that day. Um, he uses Victron for the, um, for lithium, um, but really solid guy, really solid shop. Um, that makes a note that I will um, write down just to reach out to him because that was not fair to him at all. Um, so good point there. Um, so Matt C, so they got a, two, a 2015 Travato. That was an early one. Uh, congratulations, sir. Uh, that was just, a, I'm so excited for you. Um, <laughs> Glock's a great band mate. I don't know. Is that a is that a cat, a dog? Um, I don't know, a brew pub? What is that? Uh, yeah, I think you're going to be kind of surprised. They're, so I spent a lot of time with these guys uh, last week and uh, the Volta team, and they got a lot of plans I can't talk about. They'll probably talk about them at the, um, at the rally. Um, I think well, I'll just leave it at that. Um, so here's Walter. Good to see you, Walter. He is a frequent emailer and a frequent commenter. Thank you, sir. Just picked up the 2022 Travato GL. Congratulations, sir. Let's have a toast to Walter and his new GL. Oh my God. And the fan lead is a uh, fan lead is not opening any quick suggestions. Similar experience before I spend time trying to figure it out. Um, 
it might just be too tight. So there's, a, if you see it right there, there's a hand crank. Don't hit the power button, just hand crank it and see if it goes open. It may just be stuck. They may have actually put some glue as they're trying to make this thing really watertight up there. There might be just a little bit of adhesive or something. So that would be my guess. Um, if the motor's not working, I wouldn't force the motor. I would kind of force the hand crank, if you will, to help that. Anybody else have some suggestions for Walter here? Um, that's the first thing I would try out from the inside and go on the outside and kind of inspect it. Be super careful about standing on your roof of your van. Um, Rich is saying he's got his stickers last week. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that. And we're working on getting a van tour. They've got a very cool van. And um, so um, stay tuned for Rich and Cecilia. Um, look at this. Patrick, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you, my KL. Oh, Patrick, this is Forest Park, Patrick, uh, from Mick this weekend. Did I get my commission? I get a big thank you. That's all I need sometimes, really. And your tip is more than enough, sir. Uh, I'm so proud of you. For those of you that were at the Roundup, we did a Roundup at Winnebago Motorhomes in Rockford, Illinois. That's my home dealership. And um, they had a um, lightly used Travato KL on the lot. And Patrick, what was your wait time? It was something like September. It had been moved a couple times, right? So I'm like, dude, it's almost exactly what you have on order. And if you want to get the summer underway, go pick that bad boy up. So I'm glad you did. And when we get to um, Forest Park, I'm going to not stock, but I'm going to street camp in front of your house, sir. Let's have some fun. <laughs> um, so that would be great. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it, sir. Uh, congratulations. Um, I'm so excited for you. Just a cool dude. Um, yeah, so here's Jane kind of giving some advice here. So I love it when you talk amongst yourselves. So probably Ruth, so you won't suck the fan live. Uh, but it trim a little sealant, too. The good news is there's a lot of sealant used. So that's not a bad thing. Um, um, this is a good question. How from Suzanne, how do you remove the screen from the max air fan for cleaning? Um, on mine, there is the bezel and then there's the little round thing. I'd have to go look at it. There's like little twist tabs. You kind of unscrew them a little bit and then they twist off. And mine is absolutely filthy. I haven't cleaned it in probably a year. You would be grossed out when you saw it. Um, maybe I'll make a video about it. I don't know. Cleaning fans. Is that something exciting? I don't know. Um, and, uh, that's, that's how you would do that. So, okay, let's do van tip. We're going to run out of time. Um, keep the questions coming in. There's a few more in here. I really do appreciate it. And um, let me just make sure I have this teed up correctly. Uh, yes, 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 stand by. So this is kind of a cool van tip. Um, now, some of these have come for you. I think some of you have recommended this, and I did not take the advice, like, I don't know, a year ago. I live in a van. I'm a little slow sometimes. So here's the van tip of the week. And you will see this reposted as a short video. Um, that's what we're going to do going forward, as I mentioned. Um, here's the van tip. Let me zoom in for you. This has to do about light, lighting. And what I discovered is there is never enough light in the right places. This is an example. This is my pantry cupboard under my Murphy bed. And this is with the hall lights on. You can't see anything beyond those first couple of items. So what I do is I get the flashlight out. And now I'm holding the flashlight, fumbling around, trying to find the one thing that's in my pantry storage cabinet thing. I store everything there. Toilet paper and baggies and cornmeal, apparently. <laughs> um, another example of why poor lighting is not great. This is a picture of me in my Travato bathroom. You can see where the light is, it's behind me. And when you're trying to do something, focus on your face, that is the experience you gotta deal with. Turning on the hall lights really doesn't affect it much. It's really kind of annoying. I don't know why these RV makers put the light where it doesn't belong, like on top of a toilet. It should be by the sink and mirror. So I got to thinking, why don't I put some lights where they belong? So what I did is I, when I'm trying to solve a problem, I'm mentally thinking about it and I'm wandering around the store. In this case, it's Walmart. I'm in the lighting section, and I land on these LED lights. I wanted LED. I wanted battery power. I didn't really know what I was looking for. It turns out they're called puck lights. i got to say that really carefully. <laughs> and what I did is I bought one to experiment with, and that would be the one on the right, the $8.86 uh, version. Uh, there's a, a $10 version by GE, but what excited me about the Walmart brand was two key words. And let me zoom in here for you. Soft white, number one. 
Number two, dimmable. Number three, it came with batteries. And these things take three batteries per light. These guys, the GE version, didn't come with batteries at all. So you'd have to spend another, you know, quite a bit of dough just to get batteries. Thank you for including batteries, Walmart. And on the back of the package, it said it has a 60-minute auto shutoff. So you're not running your batteries down if you forget to turn your lights out. Now you're going like, yeah, Scott, that's that's pretty good stuff, right? <laughs> but let me show you this. Because I was pretty amazed at how different the lighting was in these conditions. Here's the first I want to show you. It's like, wow. Before and after. I had this mounted above my shower, above the mirror. And that's now what I look like in the morning, doing my teeth. It's shaving. Couldn't see anything before. So much better. How about this one? I put one in the pantry. What a difference. I can't tell you. Frustration goes to zero. I think I have one more for you here. I actually put one in my galley. So there's the puck light by the red arrow. And that's the two non-dimmable LED lights that are switched through 12 volt. There's a switch right above. You can see that. But I like mood lighting. You're probably familiar with that. And what I wanted to do is create mood lighting. And I had kind of two options. This, which sucks you want mood lighting. Or in my case, the far left image is just the nightlight with prints, but I didn't put enough light on the countertop if I wanted to do something in dimly lit light. So the middle picture is that puck light dimmable at about, I'd say about 40% strength. And the one on the right is at full strength. I cannot tell you what a difference it has made um, throughout the van. And I've even put one in my bedroom because, again, if I just want a little mood lighting in the corner, I don't want the big reading lights on by the cargo doors. The blue lights aren't enough. I just want a little mood lighting. Um, and that's what I roll with. And I'm telling you, if you haven't done this, where's my cursor? Um, it's, just the, it's just the most amazing thing. So I'm curious, if you have done this, what have been your results? And... If you haven't done it, here's what I'm recommending for you. Let me zoom in for you so you can see this. Um, they can get a six pack. I initially bought two and then went back, back and got a six pack. Um, it's nine bucks. It's a two pack, it's dimmable, has batteries, 60 minute auto off. And there's the item number for you. I get no compensation for this because I'm just wanting to share a van tip that somebody clued me on about a year ago, didn't take their advice. And now I'm like, this is so great. And that's my van tip for you tonight. What do you think? <laughs> Cheers, everybody. I'm fired up. Can you tell? Okay. Let's answer some more questions. And then we're coming up to the top of the hour. We got 12 minutes to go. Um, let's see. We got Suzanne's question there. Does somebody have a good uh, answer by, be, uh, beyond mine? Uh, uh, let's see. Here's uh, Mesa Mike. Um, hey, Scott. Forgot to ask you what the name of that custom van company is in Phoenix. ACI. American Crafter, American Custom, ACI, Vans, Adam, Charlie, Inc., I don't know, ACI Vans, um, and uh, I would definitely go go see him, um, Clayton was a, was a cat's name, can't remember his girlfriend's name, uh, but if you just Google ACI Vans, uh, you'll find him, um, really cool place, really great shop, new shop they just moved into, uh, yeah, so Dave is kind of confirming here. There's uh, four knobs, turn them um, 90 degrees, and it comes down real easy. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, um, you know, this is kind of an interesting point here. So William, excuse me, Travis. I just used, uh, I just used my, uh, I'll use my uh, 2022 GL this past week. Congratulations, sir. Let's have a, a tip, uh, toast for William. Quincy, I hand cranked the fan lid first, and then after I pushed the button, it worked like a charm. Uh, I'm curious how many of you have driven off with your fan open and running, and it, after about 65, 70 miles an hour for sure, you get this alarm. But hey, you're going too fast for the lid to be up, and it automatically closes, 
and you can't get the fan to operate after that. I wonder if how many of you have had that had that happen. The only way I have found to reset the fan is not plug into shore power, turn off your volt assist or your generator, however you're creating juice to the entire coach, and you have to power down the coach and then power it back up by shore power, by Volta, by uh, your generator. Um, it's happened to me many, many times, and it's very unsettling. I'm never in a place where I can pull over safely because I'm doing 70. And um, so if, 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 if the alarm's like, hey, close me down before I do it myself, if it would work. So I, I'm always after the fact. But um... So Matt's got a good question here. Any good anchor points for dog leashes when the slider is open? Um, kind of depends on how big your dog is. Um, the newer Winnebago's certainly 2020s, I would say, and and later have a couple of tie down points on the running board. Um, I've seen people use kind of screw in things into the ground. Um, my cat didn't put a lot of uh, pressure on it, so I, I kind of leashed him to the um, if the slider door is open to the handle on my on my jump seat or even the handle to the cab doors with them locked. Um, I did have Luke one time jump and try and catch something and he managed to get the door open. That was interesting. Um, maybe some of you with dogs will have good ad advice. I only have a little bit of cat advice for you. Good question. Uh... <laughs> of course he does. And you know, I have a closely next to the, um, the solar system. Um, so Roger's a huge um, space fan too, like me. Um, I got rid of most of it, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get it all gone. So, um, yeah, Deborah, uh, fantastic tip. I uh, appreciate that. Give it a try. I, I was shocked at what a difference it made. Um, and by, here, here's the puck thing right here. So let me, let me give you a more little tip on this. So thank you, Deborah. I'm glad you like this. So, so it comes with, this is a magnet. It comes with another steel magnetic piece with a little peel off 3M sticky tape thing. What I found is it doesn't stick on anything except, um, Bathroom, no. The only one it sticks on is my my the inner um, over galley cabinet for some reason. Now it's probably got to pull the paint off. Um, so what I did is I got rid of the magnet part here and I put um, Velcro on, um, and that is working really nicely. Um, so if you can't get your thing to stick to your surface, um, a little bit of Velcro on both sides, uh, hook and loop, as um, is the way you want to go um, on that. So and again, it's really nice. Let's see if this will work without blaring up my. Uh, uh, camera. So, and then what's so beautiful is that it dims. You hold it, and then it dims. See that? It's just so cool for eight bucks. I mean, and it came with batteries. You know, I mean, seriously, it's kind of hard to see right here, but give it a shot. Um, if you're looking for some lighting in some hard to reach places, we got a big group in here tonight. This is so great. Okay. Um, let's see. Looking for a couple more questions. All right, let's shift to um, our movie of the night. I've got some fun facts here for you. One's not fun at all. But um, it may have been um, kind of teased up already. So, again, where this comes from, for those of you new to the program or watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay, is I've had so many great musical experiences uh, in my life. I discovered crunchy music. And so, again, what we want to do here is if you have a, a movie, if you have a song, Share them out. Um, go to my website. There's a forum. Just go small, live large, uh, dot com slash w u w. What's up Wednesday? And uh, share those. Um, many of you, when we are hot on sharing, uh, that's what we want to do. And so that's what uh, that's where this came from. So this is movie of the night, and this may not surprise because we talked about this a little bit earlier. And that is, if you haven't seen Top Gun in like 36 years, uh, go back and see this movie. Um, I was three years out of high school and 1986 debut. Um, it made $356 million on a $15 million budget. Those are 1986 numbers. In 2013, they re-released it in IMAX 3D. Can you imagine that? How on earth did I miss that? And the soundtrack is probably one of the best soundtracks in the movie industry. Now, 36 years later, there's Top Gun Maverick. Um, apparently Tom Cruise knocked it out of the park and the whole, the whole thing is, I can't wait to go see it. It too is in IMAX. It's made over $300 million worldwide the first weekend. I was not $1 of that. I'm, uh, upset to say, 
But here's the other thing. The director was Tony Scott. His brother was Ridley Scott. Tony was the younger brother of Ridley Scott, a famed movie maker. Ridley Scott did that very famous 1984 Apple commercial. One commercial shown once during Super Bowl. But Tony Scott also did, in addition to Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop. If you haven't seen that, go see it. If you're having a bad day, watch Beverly Hills Cop. Days of Thunder, Last Boy Scout, huge cast in that. True Romance, huge cast in that. Crimson Tide, Enemy of the State. That's why I love this program, because it forces me to do a little bit of research. And I learn things I would never know. I wasn't trying to share this stuff with you guys. And that's what this is all about. We learn, we share, we build a better community. We be better humans, hopefully. We better be better RVers. The sad thing is, Tony Scott jumped off a bridge in Los Angeles, committed suicide not too long ago. I think it was going to say 2012. I might be wrong on that. But that guy is gone. But look at the legacy he leaves behind. Holy cow. So, you know, let's have a, a little toast for Tony. and Rest in peace, sir. And doing a little bit of research, nobody knows really why he did it. Um, no inklings, but um, what a you know changed movie. Him and, and Jerry Bruckheimer, that whole that whole gang. Um, Bruckheimer is a, a producer of um, of Top Gun, one of and uh, that, that whole genre of movie action movies just forever changed. And uh, I have a download to my iPad. I watch Top Gun. Um, I don't know every few months. Beverly Hills Cop, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off because they're great movies made in the 80s when things were happy for those of you that are old enough like me the 80s are pretty happy right 90s i'm not sure you know this decade's off to a sad start <laughs> but um that's what i got for okay one more search for some questions otherwise we'll call it a wrap uh so mason mike is saying um top gun maverick was awesome in imax so that's what i have to do is go find an imax theater it's probably gonna be 30 dollars in chicago to go see it but that's okay um, I'll sneak my flask in. And um, Matt's saying, thanks for everything you do. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. That your fan works while driving. Mine doesn't. That's funny. Um, really appreciate that. Um, oh, Mark's going to be there on Saturday. So we, um, so if you're an Embassy RV wannabe or customer and you've worked with Embassy and they, they've gotten you, uh, granting you access to, um, we're doing a big embassy a camp out and meet up type thing. Not for my channel. So we, uh, we have to keep the channel folks separate. But uh, Mark, I, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Quite a few of you, actually. Um, very excited about that. I'm doing a um, RV organized uh, workshop. So that is um, one of the things. I'm drinking my whiskey. So we're going to do whiskey tasting, too. And we can have some fun together. Um, so great. All right, boys and girls. Well, I just, again, want to thank you so, so much. Um, I was, again, I really was reticent on whether to um, do the um, super chats and you guys have exceeded my expectations as you always do. And we'll keep doing it going forward. Um, don't feel obligated, but when you find something that really hits you, um, you know, throw a buck in the jar. That would certainly be appreciated by me. And um, it's just, uh, you guys drive me forward. I made a big investment in a lot of different ways in the last couple of months. And we're gonna apply all that over the next few months. And um, I'm just really excited where this, this uh, personally, and this channel, and for you, where this year is going. There's a lot of bad news going on. Turn off the news. Watch some fun things on YouTube. If you have a van, get in your van and go travel, even though gas is expensive. There's so many great things going on out there right now. So with that, we say thank you, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Two videos, one on Friday, one on Sunday. So we'll see you for the premieres of that. And I will – oh, Sharon's going to the embassy. Fantastic. I'm so excited. So we'll see you then. Or we'll see you on the small screen. Until then, I say good night and journey on.